Jonas wins this game. It's going to be over. He will be the winner. But if uh, it is a draw, then uh, we will have another game. Yeah, that's right. So Magnus, he needs to get one point out of the next two games. That's no given, uh, especially with Black. Oh, wow. I was about to say uh, Magnus is going to play super solid. He's just going to try and get into the game. A draw is still fine for Magnus recovering from the last defeat. But Duda has already surprised Magnus on move three with a really rare option here. Oh. He's just pushed this pawn forward one square. Normally, we see the Italian game, the Spanish game, like bring out the bishop in a different direction, different angle. But no, he's created a safe square for this white bishop to Fianchetto itself. And I nearly never see this at top level these days. Yeah. Really uh, surprising choice by Duda. It is a surprising choice. Now, if White were to develop the knight on the left side of the board, he would have a specialty of uh, the England women's team from uh, the early 2000s. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we all played it. <laughs> uh, okay, so Magnus playing the most committal move, you know, challenging in the centre. Okay, but is this the best? It's not the most popular response, that's for sure. Definitely not the most popular response. Nearly always Black brought out the kingside knight to attack White's pawn in the centre, but Magnus traded off those pawns, and the reason this is a bit surprising from the world champion is he's breaking the rules. Black's queen came out too early, and after the White knight jumped forward, the Black queen, which did uh, kind of bravely enter the centre of the board, has forced to stake, uh, take a step back. So right now, White is ahead in development. White has developed two nice knights out there and uh, meanwhile black with the queen that queen might be a big big target uh, throughout the next phase of the game mm -hmm. uh, especially in the late opening early middle game black might have to lose even more time yeah. with the queen and uh, i'm i just check in the database here and i can actually see that magnus has played this position with the white pieces. You know, he seems to be like the most universal <laughs> player there is. He's always got a game with white or black in the database in these particular lines. And here I'm just looking at it. He played with the white pieces against Levon Aronian in the London Classic 2019. And it was a game that Magnus lost. So I think if that, you know, maybe that game made an impression on him and he's attempting to use Levon Aronian's ideas against uh, Jan Christoph Duda. Okay, and is the game still following that one? Definitely. And uh, that game continued by actually White attacking the bishop by advancing the pawn one square, the g-pawn. Okay, so just forcing Black's light square bishop to lose even more time and uh, also breaking this really annoying pin that that bishop on the edge of the board is creating towards White's knight and towards the White queen. Look at that Black bishop. Very powerful piece. It does make a lot of logical sense here to kick it away. But then again, it's committal. If white pushes pawns to push that bishop back, then white's king will not feel entirely safe castling on the right side. Uh, so Duda does not make that commitment. He pushes this pawn forward one square instead. And actually, uh, this this kind of opening of the queen coming out, retreating, it's very, very popular nowadays with colours reversed. And uh, maybe Magnus just accepting the fact black is one tempo down, but white's set up with this Fianchetto now less effective maybe against what black is doing. And... Okay, Black backing up his center, creating a nice little pawn chain there. Also creating an escape square for Black's light square bishop. This and is actually a new move. I mean, wow. we don't, there's not too many games in the database as it is, only two. And uh, in both those games, Black took the much more ambitious approach of pushing that F pawn one square further. So this is a very interesting approach from Magnus. And uh, well, this is my favorite thing and it's happening on the board. So the white king went to the right, the black king went to the left, and that means both sides are gearing up for an attack. And it's going to be all about who opens up those lines first, who is the one that gets the first strike in, and uh, it's really spicy stuff because white has a lot of trumps and uh, so does black. So white's the kind of plan is going to be attacking, but probably along the light squares on account of uh, white's amazing long, uh, long bishop on the long diagonal. Yeah, and meanwhile, black will just throw pawns towards the white king. Uh, black might play maybe a central, uh, central strategy as well, because if you look in the centre of the board, black has a very far advanced pawn, controlling a lot of squares. White's pawn structure a bit more timid at the moment, not controlling as many squares. So uh, strategically here, black is doing quite well, but black's king, for now, may be more of a target than its counterpart. Uh, white's king, pretty safe, especially due to that bishop that Yovanka mentioned, uh, parked in front of it. So, uh, yeah, just like parking the bus, mm -hmm. uh, this white bishop in front of the king. This is the structure that I love when I'm trying not to lose. Uh, but then again, Duda, remember, he's in almost a must-win situation. 
he's not just happy to park the bus and kind of keep the White King super safe. He wants to throw pawns towards the Black King, and I wouldn't be surprised if he starts doing that now. <laughs> he took the words right out of my mouth, Duda. He's thrown, thrown this pawn forward, and this is actually a pawn sacrifice, but if the pawn is captured, Magnus really will be playing with fire. Uh, we have to jump in and show this because Duda, he has shown he's no longer afraid. He's confident once again after winning the last game and evaluation bar isn't so sure, but from a human point of view, this pawn push, a very, very strong one. And uh, it's obviously ideally designed to push forward again and kick away the Black Knight from its nice defensive square. But if you capture this pawn, if you stop it from advancing, for example, with the Black Queen or with the Black Knight, uh, then White will just take a timeout, for example, just defend its knight. And next move, this White Rook has got an open file towards the Black King. And uh, yes, White is a pawn down, but pawns are irrelevant here. It's all about energy, all about dynamism, and it's all about uh, having those active pieces. So for example, if Black continues developing, just brings a knight out, a very sensible move, White has a ready-made attack. The Rook slides across, the Black Queen moves, and the white knight might jump forward, the white queen might slide across, create this attack on the open line. Uh, it looks very scary for black. Meanwhile, as I mentioned, the white king has a safe haven and wow, Magnus is saying, okay, I don't trust you. He's getting greedy and he's snapped off this pawn. Black is a pawn up, but as mentioned, the attack's incoming. Magnus is gonna have to defend like a lion if he wants to save this game because oh. next move, white is threatening to kick the black queen away and use this open file. This Black King is already feeling super sweaty, super nervous about what is about to happen. I'm, I'm, is... I'm really shocked at Magnus's decision, actually. Uh, that, from, that pawn for me was like persona non grata. I would not have touched it at all. <gasps> because, you know, yes, you want a pawn, fantastic. But as David mentioned, you know, opening those lines and remember when you want to attack when you want to hunt the king you gotta open those lines for the minor pieces to come in i mean think of uh, lord of the rings scenario you know when they're trying to break through you know they are trying to find a way into the castle they're trying to get into that path so that the troops can all just stream into the fortress no 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 i don't like this at all and uh, look at him Magnus got fearless. What can I say? You know, he retreats his queen, but not to a square that I was expecting mm -hmm. far away from the gaze of the dark square bishop. He's just like, yep, yeah, whatever, I'm maintaining everything. And, uh, well, the computer likes it. For black. <laughs> For black. But, but the humans, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, presumably the idea is maybe to step the queen back mm -hmm. one square and just park itself on the... I think the idea is maybe even to develop the bishop yeah. to kind of challenge for this diagonal. Just, uh, for example, if the white rook slides across, maybe the bishop can develop and it blocks up, it kind of plugs this line. So uh, less to fear here, but also puts some pressure on the white knight. And if the white knight moves out of the way, then any exchange will favour black, of course, because black is now one pawn up. But uh, just to me, in this current position, uh, you mentioned the computer likes it, but when I study chess, when I try to analyze whether pawn sacrifice is good or not, I always look, okay, if the computer says roughly 0, 0.0, and if I'm a pawn down, that means that it's actually quite good from a human point of view, it's quite practical. If the computer says you're one pawn down and it's minus one, then okay, maybe I do trust it, and uh, maybe there's no sufficient compensation. But here the computer basically says 0, 0.0, and white is a pawn down. So white is completely fine despite having one pawn less. And wow, Duda, uh, just in light of this bishop trying to come out and trying to create this type of pin, some pressure on this diagonal, he said, okay, yes, I'm a pawn down, but I can take a time out. I can just stop you from fulfilling your plan. He pushes a pawn forward, covering this key square, and now black's bishop is stuck. It cannot jump to the aid of its king, of its queen, and uh, some real threats, as Yvanka mentioned, on this diagonal and maybe on this file later on. And uh, one thing I should mention to viewers at home, do not get greedy here as Magnus and capture a second pawn, because oh. if you take the second pawn with your bishop, you just walk into what we call a self-pin, mm. and uh, this is not going to end well. For example, white could even just win a piece immediately by jumping back with the knight, double attack, attacking the queen and attacking this bishop. One of them will drop off. Uh, so Magnus, instead of ignoring, uh, instead of capturing, sorry, that second pawn, he's just developed his knight. Mm -hmm. It's now definitely time for uh, Duda to start bringing his pieces to the party, maybe starting with the rook, or maybe starting by leaping forward to the centre with his knight, gaining more time against this black queen. This black queen has already moved four times. She's about to lose mm -hmm. even more time for Magnus. So already in move 13, this is uh, becoming quite wild then. Definitely with the kings on opposite sides as well. 
Yeah, this one, I'm going to say it now, this one's not ending in a draw. <laughs> it's going to go one way or the other. Uh, yeah. If it ends yeah. in a draw, it will be after some fireworks. Yeah. So. Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely we are expecting fireworks on the board. And uh, whilst the players are pausing for thought, well, I wanted to share with you some selfies. And uh, Johnny Slaw is uh, watching the chess and also at the same time making an airplane model. Um, very, very, very sophisticated working with little bits. So uh, we hope you're enjoying the show, Johnny. And uh, Polly says that she is enjoying the show by watching with wine and chess, mm. just the way I like it. And she sends us a big hello from Sweden. Ah, and uh, hello jealous. to you too. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Selatin Kara says, showtime. It certainly is. Ah, yes. And uh, yeah. This that is the perfect word actually for what is happening in this match. Yeah, right. Who could have predicted? I was expecting Magnus to actually come into the day with a very solid mentality, you know, just to uh, hold the fort, just to uh, do his usual stuff. I could not have predicted this. Yeah, and uh, I know lo Magnus has lots of fans. Judah, of course, has the whole of Poland behind him, lots of fans too. But for the neutral viewer, this is exactly what the match needed, Duda to win. And suddenly both players uh, kind of loosened up completely. No more kind of safety first chess, just throwing pieces at each other, taking big risks. And uh, that leads to <laughs> showtime. Mm -hmm. So uh, White's Rook there just slightly improving itself. I'm slightly surprised White didn't take uh, kind of a timeout to improve his other Rook, but this also a decent move for now. Uh, the evaluation bar, not 100% sure. Maybe this Rook move improving White's position less than uh, other pieces, uh, maybe not the kind of number one priority. But Magnus frowning, he's unsure what to do because the attack against the Black King, it's going to sl uh, slowly start building. And once it starts, it's going to accelerate. So uh, he knows he's got two or three moves here before Duda builds up a huge kind of initiative, momentum against yeah. that Black King. Mm -hmm. It just seems like Magnus just lost momentum after that move in the previous game mm -hmm. where he lost that game. And now, you know, his body language is still sort of like he's annoyed with himself for making that move. I don't know what it is. Yeah, you can tell, right? Yeah. Uh, the top players are perfectionists. So even if Magnus now goes on to win the final, he'll look back at that one game. He'll think, ah, I could have had a whitewash. I could have just completely yeah. uh, won every single game, just knocked out Duda and just kind of asserted his authority. But suddenly it's really in the balance this match now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you and I were discussing the second game uh, during during the the break and we kind of found a way to win and I'm sure Magnus is thinking about for Magnus. that. For Magnus, yeah. yeah. And so I'm sure Magnus is actually thinking about yeah. that and just think, oh, if I had just slowed down, if I played this, we wouldn't even be playing game three. But, you know, you have to adapt to the circumstances and that is something that Magnus is able to do. We've seen him do it time and time again, you know. He's knocked down, but he's like the you know, Terminator. He gets back up again, yeah. reassembles himself. Yeah. And, uh, I love that song. <laughs> <laughs> I get knocked down, but I get up again. It's like 1998 or 97? Or... Oh, I think it's earlier than that, right? Maybe, yeah. Oh, I mean, it was the 1998 World Cup. That's when I, it was ah. like the anthem. <laughs> uh, but yeah, maybe earlier than that, the song. And France won. The France 98, yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, <laughs> Magnus missing that. Actually, he could have won in one move. It was quite a simple one just in hindsight. And yeah, he'll be kicking himself. Uh, maybe now thinking for a couple of minutes, Magnus, is he just focusing on the game? He's quite good at bouncing back in general, just focusing on the present moment, uh, just kind of living in the current position. Mm -hmm. But if it were me, if it were most humans, we would be thinking, oh, I could have won in one move. I could be down at the good night pub right now, <laughs> celebrating. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Magnus needs to just kind of refocus somehow, re-energize himself. And it's not looking that easy. Mm. Um, if you look at Black's pieces as well, how are you going to ever go towards the White King? There's just a barricade. There's like a white knight near the king, white bishop on the light squares, super safe. And if you can't go in and attack as black, you purely have to defend. And uh, yeah, I talked about parking the bus for white. I think Magnus needs to do that for black. He needs to somehow curl up into a ball. As we see, black's bishop now abandoning all thoughts of a pin. Black's bishop was actually on a decent diagonal, but it's going back to the defense. It's going to try and cover some light squares in black's camp. And uh, yeah, I'm not so sure I'm a fan of that one. I think Magnus could have delayed this decision, but by the way, he needs to do this type of thing at some point. He needs to start retreating, just curling up, defending everything. Yeah. I agree with you. I'm not a fan of this bishop move uh, for the simple fact that, you know, I would have actually liked it if White had stepped forward with a pawn and driven that bishop back. Force 
wait to spend time exactly persuading you to play the move you actually want to play anyway exactly yeah. and i think I, I would have been you know i'm a kind of a little bit of a chicken by nature <laughs> and i don't quite like the fact that the queen <laughs> the queen is uh is a uh, i being eyed up by the dark square bishop so i was kind of looking at moves such as dropping the queen back one square or and okay maybe let's see what magnus has uh, in store because it's not entirely clear how duda is going to carry on his attack yep so one option we mentioned would be Duda's knight on the left side, just jumping out the way, creating that threat that Ivanka alluded to. Okay, there we go. Just as I said it, he plays it. Uh, this is probably the most natural move in the position. I was also going to say White's queen could maybe slid across two squares or kind of centralise herself. The white knight does park itself in the middle of the board, the most natural move. Okay, I was going to say the computer didn't like it, but it's, uh, it's just kind of changed its mind there. There is a threat, however. Black's queen now attacked by White's dark square bishop. So Black's queen... I'm also, like you, expecting it to slide back, but just which direction? Maybe step up one square, uh, step down one square, another decent option. And at least here you blockade White's pawns. White's pawns will not kind of continue their journey and fly up the board towards the Black King. She doesn't have too many squares, though. Yeah, you've got to be really careful that Black Queen doesn't get trapped. And uh, sometimes we talk about the Scandinavian defence, the Scandinavian opening, and... That is actually very similar to this type of scenario where the queen comes out really early for black. And quite often, if she gets greedy, grabs a pawn, she ends up getting trapped on these few squares. So, okay, how can maybe Duda start bringing the white knights back towards the black queen? Uh, how can white bring the rooks towards the black queen, maybe? So the, so the first move that kind of can cut, well, comes to mind is basically just attack the queen. Just mm -hmm. Jump forward with the knight, mm -hmm. see where she goes. And, uh, you know, if she's stepping on the B line, well, you know. Wow, Yvanka, sorry, just to <laughs> oh. look at Stockfish here. Oh. Stockfish gives White a huge advantage, and it's the move you mentioned, Yvanka. Okay. Uh, what could the idea be? So you said it's the most natural, right? Yeah. I agree. Uh, and uh, my idea was just simple. I don't know whether this is a Stockfish, but... Uh, she, the Queen is completely trapped here, apart from one square. Uh, I'll say that first. The Queen, if you look at it, uh, it cannot go to any of the squares across this rank. It's All of these squares are covered by white. Wow. And that is really frustrating, first of all. The queen can't go back. This is covered by the white bishop. Uh, the queen can't go back here. It's covered by the white knight, so it only has one safe square. That's to go to this one. But what have we been talking about the whole time? It's this open line. Mm. So maybe it's something to do with this. I'm trying to work it out myself. Um, Yvanka, is it a knight sacrifice? Is the knight going to break? open black's king position yeah that I... feels a bit too brave because there's no backup for white's pieces uh sorry that the remaining white pieces they're not quite ready to oh, attack it must oh be something my god david i just took a look okay and it's something not... incredible it is something incredible i'm not sure how humid it is okay it is actually sacrificing a knight that you don't, wouldn't even expect it. it is to wow, jump this knight. yes you jump that knight into the center and take like, this pawn yes Whoa. Uh, okay. This is like incredible stuff. Okay, okay so he's played the first move, Duda, but the but first move was obvious. It's the follow up. Okay, and he, he doesn't find the follow up. Doesn't find the follow up. And just to explain why this was so strong, uh, this knight is sacrificed itself in order to open up this bishop. It was a sleeping giant. We talk about the Fianchetto bishop all the time, but this bishop on its diagonal is just going to be unleashed and become super strong. Duda shaking his head. Maybe he spotted that he could have opened up this piece. It does come at the cost of your knight, though. And if this knight is captured, which I think it would be, then... I think it's just to maybe... Bring the queen out, maybe yep. gain some time, check the yes. black king, and, uh, force the black king onto this line that we've been talking about. And now you can do your big sacrifice. Now sacrifice another knight. So Duda, in order to win, which he maybe could have done, would have had to sacrifice both his knights. And the idea is that this knight now, no matter which way you take it, with the king, with the queen, it will just walk into a pin. Pin and win. And the white rook will now win the black queen. So this was three or four moves deep. Uh, it would have started with a sacrifice of one knight and then a sacrifice after this move of another knight. But Duda, he was capable of spotting this. That's where we talk about the evaluation bar. If Duda had seen the evaluation bar, ah. he would have looked for something. He would have realised a win existed and he would have found it. But it's so hard when you're playing the world champion to kind of realise that they have made a mistake. And this one opening up lines towards the Black King was the key, even at the cost of two knights. But instead, the move he makes, moving his bishop, makes the bar go over to Magnus' side. Yeah, and it's just too slow. And also, look at this bishop. He's actually blocked the path of its own rook. The rook wants to use this file, but now it's got its own bishop standing in the way. And it's also given Magnus one move to defend. And uh, the only thing I can think of here 
is moving this knight out of the way. You've got to be really, really careful uh, as black because this queen is actually almost trapped again. White has ideas of pushing the pawn forward and trying to trap this queen. For example, if black is slow, uh, the white pawn might step forward at some point, and now the white knight might even jump back trying to trap this queen. Uh, something along these lines. But Magnus, he does have this one move, so uh, this might be a threat. He needs to move this knight. For example, Trying to find a safe square. This one or well, this one? Well, he did one. move it. He did He okay. did move, but he actually played knight takes bishop first. Okay, interesting. He captured this bishop and now he's moved his knight across, but this is really Ooh. scary. How many squ squares does this queen have? Not many. It's only got one safe square there or it can capture a pawn. So how can white play Yovanka every time? Now you told me about this move. Every turn I'm looking for this. <laughs> Maybe you can sacrifice the knight, though. But it's not too late, basically. Maybe not, because now um, the reason I say the black pawn should capture is if the black knight captures, suddenly the white bishop will swoop in, guarded by its knight, and this looks deadly. The black king just too open now. Uh, and if the black pawn takes, now this check. You force the black king towards the corner. And now, again, there's going to be sacrifices maybe on this square. There's going to be knight checks maybe on this square. Yeah, Pawns are stepping forward. You, you, you can, spotted something, Yeah, no, you can sacrifice on the... On the For the pawn. Yeah. yeah, because if the black king takes, then... Uh, you just step forward with your pawn, right? Yeah, suddenly, look at this bishop. It's opened up and the black king is going to die on the light squares. I don't think there's any path to survival. And also, not just the king will die, but the queen is pretty much trapped. If she takes this pawn, remember, pin and win. The rook wins the queen. And uh, maybe, uh, can we check this? Maybe, uh, I think this possibly is quite a strong move in the current position. Knight takes pawn. He's got a second opportunity. He missed it the first time. Yes, it is. It is wow. possible. And the, uh, the alternative, uh, which is also equally strong, is actually not to capture the knight, but to kind of put the, the knight up for grabs on the g5 square. Wow. But the theme is very much the same. So this is one way for white to actually secure a winning advantage. Uh, another way is just actually just to attack the queen with the pawn, which I think is a lot more human. A lot more natural, yeah. Pushing the pawn, attacking the black queen and forcing her to make a decision. Let's go back to the players. We're expecting white to jump away out of the eye line of his own bishop with his knight, even sacrificing a piece. And that would be spectacular and very, very strong. I don't think Magnus has spotted it. I think Magnus thinks he's fine here, but yeah. really dangerous position for Black. If Duda actually finds that sacrifice, I think probably it would be the best game th of the tournament. Yeah, I think at least the coolest move of the tournament if that white knight jumps out the way, sacrificing itself. And yeah, if he wins this one, what a final we've got on our hands. Uh, yeah, Magnus frowning. He's either got the best poker face in the world, Magnus, <laughs> or he just hasn't spotted this idea. And I think in a long game, for sure, Magnus would be on the lookout for all these threats, these checks, these captures, everything. But in Rapid, maybe he's just kind of assuming that Duda doesn't have the time to work it all out. Because it's not just working it out. You have to really calculate to the end. Uh, because you're sacrificing at least one knight, maybe two knights, just to go for the Black King. Wow. This is, this is the key moment of the whole final, this one move, if Duda finds a knight sacrifice. Oh, wow, you guys. Well, who knows? If uh, Magnus wins this game, then uh, the match will be over and the tournament will be over. But uh, it's looking good for young Christoph Duda. We have made it now, you guys, to $144,000. And it's one of those it. night oh, moves. I found it. He's winning now, Duda. And uh, yes, the evalu okay, the evaluation bar is going to take a while, I was about to say, to f finally see the truth. But Magnus raising his eyebrows, he's still in shock. This is exactly the idea we just showed, but a uh, slightly different version. Black's uh, bishop now, the light square bishop under fire. This knight has to be taken off the board. Simply nothing else to do. But then white's queen is going to come out on the diagonal. White's light square bishop has been unleashed. Everything is in white's favour. And uh, yeah, I think as the computer starts to calculate deeper and deeper, the evaluation bar is going to go to white's side even more. And Duda, genius. He loves these wild positions. We mentioned it. This is a Duda type of position. It's not a Magnus type of position. And mm -hmm. Magnus starting to react finally. He's going to start realizing it's dangerous for him. Wow. Oh, oh Magnus Carlsen, he lost game two. Young Christoph Duda tying this second match. And if uh, Duda wins this match, we're going to head to tie breaks. And there the bar goes up for Duda, finding that incredible move. He has four and a half minutes left on his clock. Magnus has more time. Magnus has more time, but he's going to burn that time now, I think, because it's much more difficult in terms of kind of working out how to defend than it is how to attack. Now Duda has... This move was the difficult one. Now he's worked this one out. He's seen three or four moves into the future. 
White's ideas are very straightforward. So Dude is going to be able to play quickly. Magnus on the defensive, he's going to have to spend that time just figuring out how to survive. And just the depth, kind of the deepness of this idea is showed by how long it took the evaluation bar to react mm. in White's favour. It's so complicated, this, uh, this one still. I'm not writing off Magnus. If Duda is careless for one move, then Duda might just end up a knight down. His sacrifice will not be justified. He needs to continue being energetic, but Yavanka, yeah. this idea you mentioned, it's jumping fantastic. out the way with his knight. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm not even sure whether it would have entered my radar. I mean, it, I, I think I would have spotted it. In a long game, a classical game, maybe. Yeah, maybe in a classical game, maybe if it had been an exercise in a mm -hmm. puzzle book where I knew why I had something there. Yeah. But uh, I think my eye would have been drawn to those pawn pushes and I would have picked up the pawn and maybe attacked the queen. I agree. That's also a natural move and you mentioned also pretty strong. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's why we say to ourselves, right, always look for checks, captures, threats. White had no checks in the position previously. White had a couple of captures, one of them was quite strong, but the next one we look for is always threats. Uh, if you create threats, your opponent has to react to them, so you gain time. So White is giving up a whole night for free, just for time. Uh, and he's going to gain not just one move, two moves, he's going to gain three or four moves White. The White Queen's going to come out, check. White's going to capture something, throw pawns forward towards the Black Queen. Black literally has no time to react. It's every move he's on the back foot. Wow, what a game. And uh, before it goes completely, Poco loco, isn't that what you say, for a crazy <laughs> game? Uh, I have to remind you guys that only 34 minutes is left in our final auction for uh, our fundraiser for UNICEF. The chessboard signed by Magnus Carlsen, current bid $5,100. And uh, the AirThings device signed also by Magnus Carlsen, $1,025. 34 minutes to go to make your bid. All money goes to UNICEF. And we have some moves. We have some moves, and as expected, that white knight was just too strong. It was attacking black's light square bishop, so it had to be eliminated. Black did go and capture that piece, and white's queen immediately darted out. That queen opened up on the diagonal, gaining time, as we mentioned, checking the black king, the black king hiding. So now, next step for Duda, open up that king. It's that simple. You have to open up the black king, remove some pawns in front of it, and uh, there's a couple of ways to do that. We mentioned maybe jumping forward with the white knight, sacrificing not just one knight, but two. Uh, that would be very brave by Duda. Uh, there are some alternatives. You could maybe push a pawn forward, attacking the black queen first. Options. And that's maybe one thing that could get in Duda's way. Uh, I mentioned that his moves are obvious, but there are two or three plans. It's just putting them together in the right order. Mm -hmm. Ivanka, what do you think White should start with? Yeah, I mean, I, it's, oh, I think it's also very tempting to push the pawn forward and attack, attack, the, the, attack the queen. Mm -hmm. Because also ideas that you have in your pocket is also maybe to give a check with a knight. Mm -hmm. uh, especially because the queen doesn't have too many squares. If she jumps forward, then we have a nice straightforward uh, idea of opening up the, the B line. And uh, David's going to highlight it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really do like this move. Yeah, hitting the black queen. And if the black queen captures this pawn, as you mentioned, this idea opening up the line for the white rooks. Uh, the white rooks are coming and they're going to break through to the black king. And uh, if the black queen steps back, then you just have to work out what happens after this knight check. It's a fork after all, attacking the king, a royal fork, attacking the queen as well. Uh, so the knight has to be removed. And now the white queen swoops in, attacking this bishop. And it looks very scary for black, but you have to continue calculating. Uh, the black king not quite trapped on the back rank. Maybe the black bishop can jump out, attack the white rook. So much to work out here. It might be very good for white, or Black might be surviving. And uh, Black does have temporarily a bit of extra material. So uh, Duda, this is one option, attacking the Black Queen. Uh, you could kind of flip the move order. You could give this check first, maybe. Same idea, just different order. Uh, another option, as we mentioned, Knight takes Pawn. But then you do have to really work out the details because you're giving up two pieces, not just one. Uh, okay, he gives the check. Uh, basically the same idea we just showed there. But remember, the Black King, if it moves out of the check, then the queen might get trapped. The white pawn will step forward and the black queen, only one square. This walks into yet another attack. And look at these rooks. You'll never see two stronger rooks in an attack oh. uh, because their vision here is going to blow the position open. It's not just that, but look at this bishop. Finally, after all those sacrifices, you've driven the black king onto its diagonal and the bishop as well is going to participate and win this game. Wow. It does almost feel like what has a checkmate in the air. You know, the yeah. black's king is completely dominated, can't move. So very dangerous position. So you do have to capture that knight. But the bar goes to zero and, and young it's, Christoph, he, he shakes his head. Yeah, he shakes his head. Maybe he's just trying to calculate this, uh, this position. 
often chess players, another reason they shake their head is not necessarily because they're unhappy, it's just because they're so confused. Ah. And uh, this position <laughs> is very confusing because there's so much happening on every turn. I think Magnus smiling there, wow. What? Imagine what a crazy moment, smiling and then frowning. He has to eliminate this knight. Anything else, I think, loses on the spot. Maybe we can get Stockfish's suggestions up here to confirm. I think you have to take this knight off the board. Anything else, you lose. Ah. And wow, he can go to the corner according to the computer. But that looks so inhuman, yeah. so suicidal. Going into the corner, as we mentioned, going and... But it's oh, not very it's... practical and no. it feels like you're just playing with fire. I wouldn't even dream of that uh, possibility. Yeah. The Black King is just too much of a target here, kind of uh, linear and uh, diagonally. It's just, OK, he does give up his rook. I think that was what Magnus had to do, giving up the rook for the knight, eliminating an attacker. And notice how this bishop's attacked if it goes to a safe square, for example, then back rank checkmate, the king is trapped, and uh, this ends the game. But instead, Magnus counterattacking, not able to move that bishop, he jumps out and hits the white rook. This is still chaotic. I think Duda should keep the pieces on. I don't think he should trade uh, by capturing this bishop. Uh, suddenly we'd see everything start disappearing from, from the board. Maybe white's doing well with an active queen, but at least the black king is safe. I think you need to keep up the attack, and Duda does that uh, in the current position, bringing his rook across. I mentioned the two rooks being super strong still. Loads of threats against the Black King. Ivanka, predictions. Uh, all <laughs> predictions off in this position. They're off, David. Uh, it's so difficult even to find a move for, for Black because, yeah. you know, both bishops vulnerable. You know, if you step forward with the light squared bishop, I mean, I can only really see one square it can go to, yeah. which yeah. is to relocate itself to a different diagonal. Yeah. Black's light squared uh, bishop attacked, but also White is maybe threatening to capture the Black Knight with his bishop and yeah, just open up the blinds for the White Rooks. Exactly, rooks. and if that's the big, big issue, then you can't play that. You actually have to overprotect your bishop, your dark squared bishop. But then, you know, there's a rook pinning the bishop. I mean, mm. it's such an unpleasant position, and uh, he does reinforce the protection of the dark squared bishop. But At the very least now, very minimum, Duda can just use the white queen, pick it up, bring it across two squares and take black's light squared bishop for free. And actually, Duda would be ahead on material there and with an attack going on. So plus three for white now, according to the computer. That's why we were so kind of enthusiastic about white's chances, because black is the one defending and it's so much harder for black to defend than it is for white to attack. And uh, yeah, I think Magnus, even if he had half an hour on the clock there, he would have struggled to find the best moves. Ah. Computers are the only ones who could ever dream of defending this position. Duda, meanwhile, he's tr is he trying to be more ambitious? Is he looking for something else? I think I would just take that bishop off and, uh, yeah, move first and think later. <laughs> it's a free piece after all. Yeah. It is also tempting just to step forward with the uh, C-pawn mm -hmm. and uh, try and win the dark square bishop yeah. as well. Which bishop to go for? <laughs> I know, I, but I also agree with you. I think I would just uh, capture the light square bishop because it's not just the light square bishop that's falling as well. It's also pawns. And, uh, well, Duda... It, Oh, wow. Takes the knight. He's got a really cunning idea in mind, actually. I, I ruled this one out automatically. I thought the black queen could go back and recapture this bishop, but white would win instantly. <sighs> Duda, surprising us, surprising Magnus, maybe. Even stronger than what we suggested. We have to show this because I think he's about to win, Duda. I think Magnus is on the brink now. He played bishop takes knight, and Magnus didn't even capture this bishop. If he'd taken with the queen, after a queen trade, it looks like black has two bishops versus just one rook, but white wins by removing the defender of this bishop. Rook takes pawn. Incredible move. This bishop is pinned, so it can't move. And uh, next move, you simply capture it. You win a bishop, you win the game. Uh, for example, if it's defended, again, you can remove this pawn because the bishop cannot uh, jump out of the pin. So queen trade wouldn't have been possible there. If black had captured this bishop with his pawn, then now white would simply capture the black bishop. And due to this pin, Black is going to lose a second piece after the pawn steps forward and wins this piece. Uh, so Magnus just uh, ignoring it. But wait back. one second. So like, you t you could temporarily be uh, wow. okay pushing yeah, he pushing the pawn, attacking the bishop. I'm just thinking that he could potentially be a whole rook down. Magnus. Magnus. Yeah. This is. He might be a rook down and being attacked. <laughs> that is not <laughs> ideal in anyone's uh, in anyone's book. So now this bishop is under fire. Notice how this bishop still cannot move. If you move it out the way, your queen drops behind, and uh, still this pin is just deadly. It's all about the rooks and black's bishop here under fire. Black's bishop here under fire. 
I think it's game over. I think Magnus is going to resign any moment. I just can't see a way to survive. Wow. Uh, for example, if you move this bishop out the way, as Ivanka mentioned, there's just no good square. If you drop the bishop back, you walk into a nasty check on the back rank. And just no safety here. In the current position, Duda has done everything right. This is a bit of a masterpiece so far from him. Yeah, how impressive. Turnaround. Yeah, Michelin totally match. turnaround. And uh, guess what? Only 24 moves have been played. That's, I and, mean, how uh, often does Magnus even lose? And in 24 moves, so right. Wow. How and uh, this is also his second loss mm. in a row. So this is going to upset the world champion. Okay, so he defends his, his bishop with a rook. But okay, pawn takes bishop on the board and still that attack is brewing for Duda. And, and now he's, right. he's going to go rook down. He's, he's currently a whole rook down there, Magnus Carlsen. And with this last move, attacking the black rook, the white queen about to win even more pieces. Magnus just resigns. Game over. Duda striking back, fighting back. He's now in the lead today. What wow. Wow. And what a comeback by Jan Christoph Duda.